In my previous vacuum engine video, I somewhat successfully got the old Briggs and Stratton engine to run off a vacuum. However, it was really slow and I knew that there could be a lot of improvements made. I got a ton of comments of people telling me things I did wrong and things I should improve. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. So most of the comments were basically people telling me that I shouldn't have connected the two valves together and I instead should have had an exhaust valve. So I quickly stole a spring from one of the engine DIY shop engines and I put it on the exhaust valve. The reason I went for this spring is that I figured it would be a lot easier for the engine to open the valve so that the engine wouldn't get stopped by the force required to open the valve. A lot of people told me I should have left the original cam profile and instead just changed it to a one-to-one -one ratio. But uh, no, that would not work, because if I would have done that, that means both of the valves would have opened up during one single stroke of the piston, which is not what we want. So I instead left the cam profile of the previous engine, which was the cams being 180 degrees from each other, and I just changed the ratio to be one-to-one, -one, so that for every rotation of the crankshaft, the camshaft rotates once as well. I couldn't get any gears to mesh properly, so I just decided to use a chain to connect the crankshaft to the camshaft. A couple of people told me to use these LEGO Technic discs for the valves. However, I don't have any of those, so I'm just gonna stick with the two x two tiles I have now. Another thing a couple of people told me was that the original flywheel that I had put on with the addition of an exhaust valve should be enough to keep the engine running, so I decided to put it back on. However, after a few tests, I realized the flywheel was not big enough, so I went back to the large flywheel that I had put on in the last video. After a bunch of different tests, I realized the engine was just not going to run. The vacuum was able to suck out a lot of air, however it wasn't enough to keep the engine running. Well, attempt number two of the vacuum Briggs & Stratton engine didn't go as well as I thought it would. Even though I put an exhaust port on there, it seemed like it just didn't want to run and I don't really know why. I can't really think of any other ways to try to get this engine to run without making some massive modifications. I really wanted to try to keep this as close to the original as possible. And with changing the camshaft ratio to one to one, I really wasn't comfortable with that, but I knew that that would be one of the only ways to get the exhaust valve to work properly. So I want to thank everybody that commented on the first video for pointing out some stuff, giving me some tips and some ideas and they really help my understanding of vacuum engines however i just think doing something like this is way out of my league i really have no idea what i'm doing like in the previous briggs and stratton video if you want to try to do this yourself there are instructions in the description and if you decide to make a video on it uh, be sure to tag me i'd really like to see how you do it uh, if you can do it and uh, yeah Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.